It's a shame because there are many elements within the Invasion event that are fun. I just don't think Blizzard have implemented the event in the right way. So are we playing Classic or Retail World of Warcraft? This seems to be one of the biggest sentiments in the community right now. But why? Today we will attempt to review and evaluate the quality of Season of Discovery's Phase 3. Blizzard took a huge risk with many experimental design choices with this update, but did it pay off? Guys, if you're running out of stuff to do in Season of Discovery, you might want to finally give Raid Shadow Legends a spin. I know you've probably seen about 2 million ads for this game by now, but to be fair, it is a really fun game to play with amazing graphics, epic boss battles, and with over 800 champions now to collect and customize. Raid Shadow Legends is available on PC, Android, and iOS. You can just click on the link in the description or scan my QR code now to download the game and get some amazing champions for free. Raid have also released a huge new update, the Cursed City. This is a brand new area where you can explore dark secrets of an ancient kingdom, fight against powerful enemies and earn some pretty good rewards. The Cursed City is full of surprises and challenges, so you better be prepared. But don't worry, because Raid is hooking everyone up who watches this video with two free epic champions to help you out. Light Swan, and then when you reach level 15, you can unlock Juliana. Light Swan is a holy warrior who can debuff enemies and revive your allies, while Juliana is a fiery assassin who can deal massive damage with her poison and burn skill. These two champions are perfect for the Cursed City, and you can get them for free when you download Raid using my link in the description or again scan QR code. And if you can believe it, Raid are giving you even more stuff with an additional champion called Oboro, a strong epic champion providing a significant advantage early game. All you have to do is use the code Ghetto Boro within the initial 72 hours of registering for the game. So guys, what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on these opportunities. Click the link below to start your adventure in the Cursed City. But anyway, let's get on with the video. The most experimental feature of Phase 3 definitely has to be the new PvE world event, Nightmare Incursions. They are precisely where the Emerald Dream Dragon world boss locations were in the original classic World of Warcraft. They always had these strange portals behind them, and it was always quite an anticlimax originally for players because we quickly discovered that they go to nowhere. So this world event feels like cut vanilla World of Warcraft content. Season of Discovery is finally starting to become a real Classic Plus server, which is great. Ultimately, this is what Classic players want. It's especially obvious when you look at how big the vanilla Plus private server scene is. Within the portal, there are 17 different objectives for you to complete, all basically the same across the worlds. They involve killing mobs, talking to NPCs, picking up items, and killing mini world bosses. The areas are packed with players from both factions, both fighting against or even with each other, to complete the objectives, and most of the time, it's a pretty fun event to just go and zerg and get a load of XP and gold. With this event, there is also a new faction reputation to farm with some pretty powerful rewards. Personally, I found the event to be entertaining, and it's good that Blizzard are finally starting to understand what makes Vanilla WoW shine, and why it is so fondly remembered, and that's open world group content. That being said, there are a number of problems with this event, and players on forums and in my comment section, as you can see, are expressing our distaste with the event, calling it a retail WoW event. I honestly don't think that tagging this event as a Retail WoW event is necessarily totally fair. Firstly, at Vanilla WoW's core, there are world events like this one. The original world bosses, Gates of AQ opening, Scourge Invasion event, and the pre-Battleground Hillsbrad Foothills skirmishes. These are defining features of Vanilla WoW. Although, I do understand why many classic players are not a huge fan of Nightmare Incursions. I mostly leveled my character level 40 to 50 with the event, but honestly, in the end, I did find it about as stale as a politician's personality. And now that I'm max level, I honestly feel no motivation to go back. Particularly, as it wasn't long until the maximum XP per hour strategy was figured out that only involved you quickly running around and doing the mission report and recover quests. So many people spent their leveling journey in Phase 3 doing nothing but running around, doing some quick fetch quests on repeat, which, let's be honest, it's not very fun. It's obviously a bit boring, and it's totally trivialized the leveling experience, because why bother doing open world questing, exploration, and dungeon quest chains when you can just do the invasion event? 
It's a shame because there are many elements within the Invasion event that are fun, I just don't think Blizzard have implemented the event in the right way. I don't understand why it's a permanent event. Why is it not a recurring event with a limited time frame like STV and the Ashenvale event? I personally think it would function better as an event that only happens about 3 times a day, but rewarded the original amount of gold that it did reward with more XP and reputation. This way it's a fun dynamic world event that you can do now and again to break up your levelling, rather than a permanent repetitive grind fest which turns out to be the best XP in the game so you feel obligated to do it. Because honestly if you look at it, it kind of is just a daily quest hub zone but the quest you can do infinitely on repeat. And for the love of god, the amount of inventory space that those mission report things take up is actually evil. I think every time the event is up, it should be slightly different each time with different quests and enemies and at the end, it has a grand finale where a big world boss spawns that you have to defeat and Bob's your uncle. The event is over until it pops up again. They're updating the event this week with a number of emergency hotfixes that nerf the amount of XP you can get from the quest but are also buffing the player XP buff to 75% between the levels of 40 to 50. Unfortunately, I think what will inevitably happen is players will just find a new, different optimal XP grind method which will very likely be grinding Zulfarak. And the level up versions of this event, meaning Dustwood and Ashenvale, will just become a ghost town and the event will become end game only, which is a shame. In my humble opinion, I think it should have just been a limited event that happens a few times a day, grants loads of rewards to break up your leveling grind, and then, you know, it should also be layered very heavily so that people don't lag and struggle to actually complete the objectives. By the way guys, I've made a map of the optimal route to get the most XP per hour from the Nightmare Incursion event. All subscribers can get instant access to that straight away, just check out my subscriber only video. The latest raid has also triggered a lot of discussion in the community. Interestingly, not only have Blizzard decided to make this a one week lockout, it's a very difficult raid by classic WoW standards even after the nerfs. As I'm making this video, only 30 guilds have completed the raid, that's only 1.97%. The main progress curb is Aranicus, who has an extortionately high HP pool. Fights with this boss are lasting 6-8 to eight minutes. Now, I like many other players do like a challenging raid, but a lot of players don't. Raiding for many classic WoW players is about chilling on Discord with your friends, with a couple of beers and having a laugh and smashing some content. Not dissimilar to playing a game like Hell Divers, Hell Divers, what the hell, Hell Divers or Sea of Thieves. You know, many classic players just aren't looking for a highly competitive and difficult gaming environment. Sunken Temple is definitely going to be a different kind of raiding experience. You won't be guaranteed a full raid clear week one. In one way, this can be seen as fun. A more challenging raid requires more effort, teamwork, and strategy from your raid team. You will fail and wipe many times, but learn from every failure until you eventually defeat the boss, which in my experience is a much more satisfying experience than the raid just being an easy face roll where you smash it week one and the bosses just drop. A lot more patience is now demanded in the average sod player. I think one thing that many classic players forget is week on week the raid team's player power will increase, making the harder bosses at the end of a raid easier and easier as time goes by. Does it really matter that you don't get all the bosses defeated immediately week 1? Does getting the raid done in week 1 slightly cheapen and rush your raiding experience for the phase? And does the boredom set in faster because there's no end goal in sight anymore? Many players do have a pump and dump mindset towards games these days, even MMOs. They just want to clear their latest raid content as fast as possible and move on to a different game and wait for the next phase to come out. But I think MMOs should be fun and engaging in different creative and challenging ways to keep players playing the game throughout an entire phase and not be bored. But also not keep you compelled to play the game like certain WoW expansions have done in the past with features like artifact power, that's a big no-no. But many players just simply want a more casual and fun raiding experience and they don't want too much to do in the game because they want the freedom for more personal time or to simply play other games. So that's why I feel like Blizzard have taken a massive risk with this one, because the raid does cater to more hardcore players, the top guilds are probably going to have a lot of fun in this raid, but the majority are not, and this is very likely going to become a similar situation to Maru during the Sunwell patch in TBC Classic. This may deter a lot of players from playing the game because they can no longer progress, which will be very sad to see. 
Although I personally prefer more challenging raid content, I shouldn't be catered to because I represent a minority opinion in the SOD community. Any of the day, I can just go play Cataclysm Classic when that comes out. A number of very welcome changes came with Phase 3 like Jewel Spec, a race-wide weapon skill buff, and a new PvP set with much more. Jewel Spec was long overdue. With so many different runes now in the game, along with the customizability of a vanilla wild talent tree, I would quite honestly prefer 5 different specs on my Warlock, so Jewel Spec was definitely needed, especially as many people like to switch between PvP and PvE content seamlessly rather than going to visit the trainer. The raid wide weapon buff means that races will be a little bit more balanced. No longer will all alliance players, for instance, feel obligated to pick human. You have more freedom to pick your race based on its unique gimmicks and looks. They finally also added a PvP set. That means that the more hardcore PvP players no longer have to bother doing PvE content in order to progress their character, meaning that players don't have to do stuff that they don't want to do in order to get that competitive edge in Battlegrounds and the Blood Moon event. So overall, Phase 3 is looking pretty strong, it particularly caters to my unique MMO gameplay taste, but I don't think it really is the preferred design approach that many current Classic WoW players are used to. For the first time in my comment section, I am seeing a lot of negative opinions about Season of Discovery, whereas it's normally the other way around and I get put on a pitchfork for saying anything remotely negative. On top of this, many players are frustrated with the fact that the people who didn't experience login issues within the first few hours of a game's launch were able to take advantage of the extremely high gold gold of you know, Yeah, my brain's breaking, it's been a long day. The extremely high gold rewards from nightmare incursions. Some players were able to get over a thousand gold in only a few hours. So that was slightly problematic. But let me know what you guys think. My name is Meta Goblins of the next video. Ciao.